I can't believe it. We're already on our fourth lesson in our series about the four we's of an incredible small group. So throughout our series, we've talked about the fact that we follow Jesus and as a group together. We've talked about the fact that we share life together. We've talked about the fact that we pray and learn about God and prayer together. And today we talk about the fact that we serve as a small group. You won't be too far in the process of growing by helping others before you realize or maybe remember that Christ followers are following a servant. Our Lord and Savior served people everywhere he went. In fact, there's a story in the Gospels where James and John, the sons of thunder, they were a bit grouchy when they were younger, apparently. They had come to Jesus asking for a special position among the disciples and in the future of the world. And Jesus responded to them in a way that gives us incredible clarity about how Jesus feels about how we should behave toward others. This is what he said, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and give his life as a ransom for many. So I know you want an incredible small group or you wouldn't be watching this series. So let's talk about today how that serving makes your small group incredible. First, when we serve, we need to remember to serve each other. Boy, that's the primary place that service needs to happen in your community is helping each other out. You become a family as a small group. You come alongside each other in the journeys of life. And that's exciting and we all need it. But we also know it's very challenging. But we begin by serving anyway. We serve people who have needs in our group, and maybe those needs are financial, and you as a small group can come together and help someone through a rough patch. Maybe it's emotional. Maybe someone in the group needs to do some mentoring with someone who's going through a very difficult time. Maybe it's just honesty. Sometimes our weaknesses get in the way of our spiritual growth, and we need a real friend to come alongside and lovingly tell us that we're missing something, that we're on the wrong track. This is all serving each other, holding each other up, and that's what we're about. Acts 2.44 said, All the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. Being in a small group is sharing life, and sharing life is serving each other. But it's not just serving each other in the group. It's also serving the larger body. In Acts chapter 6, you hit the first problem that the early church experienced. Um, I won't go into the details on the problem, just to say that the response, the answer to the problem that the apostles came up with under the leadership of the Holy Spirit was to seek out other people in the larger body that could serve the whole body, not just their small community that might be meeting in a home or in a smaller gathering somewhere. It appears that in the early church, the church gathered in homes and throughout in, throughout other places during the week and then came together in a larger communal way and one day a week. And so the apostles appointed seven people to come alongside and help them in the ministry that was growing so quickly. Well, small groups are great. They're great because they can help people get into a community and have their needs met so much more clearly, so much better than they can in a larger group. But there are larger problems that are bigger than a small group can handle. And that's where we need to work together as a larger community to come alongside and help in that way. So we serve each other. We serve the larger body. And of course, we also serve those in need. Of course, our Lord and Savior cared very much for people in poverty and in need. He met those needs every chance he was able, and he was able to do a lot. And he wants that for us. If you're going to have a Christian faith, in order for it to actually be Christian, it's going to have to help people in need. A faith that doesn't help people in need isn't a Christian faith. In fact, James wrote this in James chapter 1 regarding what religion really was about. He said, Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. Your small group can alleviate suffering in the world. You may know someone in your group that's connected with someone outside the group that has needs. Maybe you have one of those random God appointments where God 
introduces you to someone who has a need. Either way, the point is that when you can meet needs, you should meet needs. So yes, we serve each other, we serve the larger body, we serve those in need, but we also serve our city. Jesus said that we were the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. Let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your Heavenly Father. The city in which you live needs to see Jesus. Christians need to display Jesus. He's the light of the world. We are that light in to the extent with which we reflect Him. Now, the problem is that many believers come to Christ, get involved in church, ministry, small group, and all their free time either becomes about their faith group or about their own interests. The thing is, in order for the world to see Jesus in us, we need to get out in the world. And so you need to talk about as a small group the things that you could do to bring Christ's presence to your city. Maybe you could help with a cleanup day. Maybe you could help the city with some things they need to do. Who knows? The ideas and opportunities are absolutely endless. All I know is that as a Christian pastor, I really want God's people to get out in the community and love the community. The last thing I want to say about our serving is, yes, we serve each other, the larger community. Uh, we serve those in need and we serve our city. But I want to remind us all that we also serve the next generation of faith. Many years ago, then-President Ronald Reagan made this statement in one of his speeches. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. Many have taken that speech and applied it to Christianity. And I believe in the power of God, so I'm not sure how well it applies. However, we cannot deny our responsibility to give our faith to the next generation. We need to share our faith with our friends, family, and co-workers. We need to share our faith with our communities, our cities, and those in need. But we also need to share our faith with our children and their generation. Because we need to give our children and their generation a real and vibrant and Holy Spirit-filled faith so they can know God in a real way, a tangible way, and their faith can be real and vivid and alive. If we don't do that, well, the truth is many churches don't last more than one generation. That's right, one generation. Someone, an individual, a group come together together share the gospel, people come to faith, and then the next generation somehow doesn't get the message and the ministry dies out with the next generation. It's sad, it doesn't always happen, but it happens a lot more than it should. So I just want to encourage you as a small group leader or a member of a small group, make sure that you make room in your group for the next generation, whether that's through your children and youth, whether that's through inviting others in, maybe that's through assisting and helping other groups begin. Uh, some way you can share your faith, you can serve the next generation. That's what Jesus wants us to do. He is a servant, and he's teaching us to be that as well. So I hope you've enjoyed the series. I know I have. I really believe in its power. I know that when we follow Jesus and when we share our lives with each other and when we pray and when we serve each other, I know that things can get amazing very, very quickly. And that's what I pray for your group. Don't forget to take the questions below the video and talk about them together. Conversation is how we process these ideas. Please do that.